Today we're going to be talking about the skills that you need to become a front-end developer in 2018. The ones that are going to be pretty much mandatory if you work in any role in front-end development. So as always, we have our super classified, very well detailed list that is on the back of a home listing I was looking at a while back. So uh, why why do I feel like I could give some advice on this? I think this is always important to know where your advice is coming from and why, uh, how this list came to be. Well, for one, I'm a front end engineer. Uh, I So I know what skills I use in the workplace. I also recently transitioned jobs. So I can tell you what skills I saw on resumes having spent about three months doing research, as well as just being somebody that follows the software industry, the software space, with the YouTube channel, with the Facebook groups, going to meetups, coding all the time. It's really just a, a passion of mine. I, I, I follow it um, in, in, very, in a very de detailed fashion because I care about it. I, and uh, especially recently when I was, you know, three months ago looking for a new job and seeing what was out there. So I think this is a pretty realistic list of what you will need as a developer. And I'm going to break it out into two parts. We're going to break out the first part, which are the mandatories, the things that aren't really up for discussion, as far as I'm concerned. And then we're going to break it up into the optional. The things that you should have will only help you and um, are a little bit more abstract down the road. So first and foremost, HTML, right? If you're a front-end web developer, you need to be familiar with HTML. You need to be understand what the elements are that are in HTML, what the attributes are, and just be comfortable with that. The next thing is CSS, right? Those That HTML, how is it going to look? How is it going to feel? Is it going to be good UI or bad UI and UX based off the CSS that you have? These are the, the, go, the, the there's kind of really three main things that I think everyone can agree on with uh, front end development. So you have to have HTML, CSS, and the third one, JavaScript. So what does that mean? Does that mean that you need to be comfortable with vanilla JS to a degree? You need to know JavaScript. And you need to be understand the language, the, the the language, how it works, what the basic aspects of it are, the for loops, the variable types, uh, dynamic types in terms of the variables. You you have to know some of the gotchas right that go along with JavaScript because it's a bit of a wonky language. You have to understand what array methods are available to you, what string methods are available to you. And you also have to understand how to use them. So JavaScript is super crucial. Do you necessarily have to have be a master of vanilla JS DOM manipulation? Vanilla JS, if, if you're not familiar with that term, basically means the original JavaScript manipulating the DOM. I personally don't believe so, but other people may um, disagree with that. Um, and the, the reason for it is in our fourth item here. Um, the you're, you're going to have to know a front end framework, one of two basically. You're going to either have to be comfortable with the latest version of Angular, or you're going to have to be comfortable with React. And uh, some of you may be saying, well, what about Vue? Well, uh, in all honesty, or Ember, there's no jobs in comparison to React and Angular in Vue or React and it, in comparison to React and Angular. There's no jobs in Vue. There's no jobs in Ember. That's not to say that you don't have a friend who got a job in Ember. People like to live in this world of absolutes. What I'm saying is that you're better off learning where the majority of the jobs are, which are Angular and React, and and using that. But you're gonna have to know a JavaScript framework. It's just it's just the reality of the situation, and it should be one of these two. And this goes to my earlier point about DOM manipulation, about not necessarily needing to be super comfortable with it uh, in vanilla JavaScript. Uh, that that's more so if you're an Angular developer in in uh, React, a little little less so. Um, but uh, part of manipulating the the document that's handled by the frameworks, that's ha handled by the library. And people people will will kind of get upset in the comment section. React's not a framework; it's a library. Well, when I have to use React and then I have to install um, something to do Ajax calls and then I have to install something to do uh, state management redux and then I have to install you know other as as you continue uh, my, my limited experience with react is that as I continue to develop in react I found myself installing library after library after library to at which point you then have a framework as far as I'm concerned but you, you're gonna have to know angular or react and the DOM manipulation is a lot of times a lot simpler and a lot easier to handle when you're dealing with states and data because you're using these front end frameworks that don't really require you to have mastery of DOM manipulation in uh, vanilla JavaScript. 
So the, the fifth thing is Git. Um, this is pretty much a standard at every job you're ever going to have. You're going to be working on teams. You're going to be sharing code. There's going to be multiple repositories where you're going to have to be comfortable uh, posting code for others to review and sharing code to to get your what I'm trying to say is there's going to be multiple people working on the same project and um, Git is part of that process and you're just gonna have to get comfortable with it uh, if you're just getting started there's no shame in using a UI a lot of developers still do right I have uh, taken myself off that and I could say that as long as I was posting daily I everything's very clear to me on how Git works and what it does and and uh, I just didn't originally put in the time and the effort, but you can do it through the terminal and it's pretty straightforward as long as you just sort of actually devote the time to learning that. A lot of times uh, as developers, especially in web development, things are changing so frequently so often that sometimes we look for shortcuts and Git I feel like is one of those areas where we do look for that shortcut and sometimes uh, we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot, but you're gonna have to get comfortable with version control as a whole and Git is the, the main one kind of used by most teams. Uh, so those are the, uh, I have one more actually, and this is a soft skill, and I harp on this all the time, and most of you won't even, most of you will say whatever uh, on this last one, and it's probably the one that's going to hurt you the most out of this list, is communication. You need to focus on your communication skills. You need to have good communication to get a, a role as a front-end developer. The reason for it is you're going to be communicating with the back-end developers, you're going to be communicating with the team, you're going to be communicating with your project manager, your business analysts, the stakeholders, you're going to be gathering requirements at times. These are all things that require good communication and is probably uh, one of the top skills on here. And a lot of times, I, I get it, man, we're all, as developers, a lot of us are on the geekier sort of side, the awkward sort of side. A lot of us are introverts. I, I definitely fall into that category, but you're going to need to work at it. Uh, that doesn't, you're gonna have to come out of your comfort zone with this, <laughs> with your communication. If you're bad at it, you gotta work at it. If you have to go and spend a little bit of money to enroll into a speech class, to put yourself out there and just get out of that comfort zone, it is probably one of the best decisions for you in your career. And I highly encourage you to focus on communication. So the next things are what I would say fall into that optional. I don't really like the optional uh, word. What I'm going to say instead is these are the, you should have these and they will definitely make you stand out to have a better chance of getting in a role. So whatever the, the adjective for that is, someone leave it in the comments below because it's not coming to my mind. Uh, this is what you should have. Um, so first, I would say Bootstrap. A lot of a lot of organizations use Bootstrap's column grid system for their for their um, mobile side of things, for their um, responsiveness, and just stylings, right? If you're doing an in-house application, you don't necessarily need to do a ton of CSS. There's no there's no reason why you can't use Bootstrap. I use it in a lot of my projects just because I'm not too worried about CSS. I enjoy the logic aspects of it a lot more. Um, so I highly encourage you just to get familiar at least with the grid system of Bootstrap. And it's okay to get familiar with some of the uh, UI elements and the components available for you so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so I'd encourage you to learn a little bit about Bootstrap. They're currently on version 4-beta-2 or something like that. So check that out. Um, and one thing a lot of you guys may have been saying, Dylan, how dare you, for our second item here in the second part of the list, how dare you not include jQuery? I do consider jQuery a little bit optional. A lot of roles, and that, that doesn't mean that jQuery isn't widely used. I, I look at jQuery as now a web design uh, skill set uh, because most of the time now, a lot of roles will be having you do Angular and React and very little jQuery. And I feel like web designers versus web developers have, a have to do a little bit more than they um, could before. And jQuery is not going to be what let, helps land you a role. Should you be familiar with jQuery? Absolutely. And I, you know, I, I when I started out and was learning development, the first uh, framework I used, first library I used, jQuery. It has a lot of functionality. It's at one point in time, it was a great way of doing things. It's not what's going to necessarily help you land a role nowadays, but it is. I guess what I'm trying to say is between Angular, React, and jQuery, Angular and React beat it out tenfold. And jQuery is something that you can devote a little bit of time to and get familiar with how the library works in a, in a week or two and build some projects in it. And that would probably be enough to get you familiar with jQuery. So I would encourage you to, to be familiar with jQuery. Um, 
as one of your uh, additional things to make you stand out. So the next is um, testing. This is something that is often overlooked, and it's definitely something overlooked by a lot of um, a lot of developers at, who are professional developers. And it's also overlooked by a lot of people who are trying to become developers and break into the field. Testing, testing, testing. In Angular, uh, they use Car a Karma and Jasmine that's built in directly to the Angular CLI. So if you start a new package, it's there. It's easy to set up. You go and you start writing unit tests. Tests, um, in terms of um, Karma and Jasmine, or Jasmine rather, it's really easy to test your functionality and to test your components and to test your uh, functions. This is something that very few developers take advantage of, how much it will make you stand out as an employee, a potential employee. A lot of workplaces do what's called test-driven development. So essentially you're, you're running your tests or building tests before you actually write your code so that you can uh, test and code at the same time, as well as have tests for after your project is complete, those same tests to make sure that if someone goes and refactors some code or somebody goes and updates, add a new feature, that we at least have some tests to make sure that stuff doesn't break. And this is something that's that's crucial in front-end development. They also have back-end uh, testing and, and they have uh, a bunch of other types of testing other than unit tests, such as end-to-end uh, -end testing where you'll actually mock a user going through the screen. I don't think you need that for what we're talking about. I think just unit testing with Karma and Jasmine would be more than enough to kind of show that you're a little bit unique. Um, another thing that would make you unique is sort of um, wireframing. Uh, this is something I harp on a little bit as well about things that very few developers do. You go and pick up maybe a free, uh, there's some free uh, sort of tools. I personally use Balsamic, which is like $70 for a year in my personal projects. And that allows me to wireframe out to essentially design and mock up the UI and the UX and gather requirements for other other people that I'm working with. Sometimes as a, as a front-end developer, you'll be doing a little bit of requirement gathering. It depends on the organization and how big of a team it is. But oftentimes when you're just getting started, you'll, you'll join sort of a smaller company where you're doing a little bit of everything, right? And having the ability to showcase that, hey, I can gather requirements and like I visually represent them in mock-ups and wireframes that's a great skill to have to make you stand out. So another skill, this, this kind of falls into um, a little, a little bit of agile methodologies. And so agile is agile and scrum and agile and Kanban. All these are all sort of procedures and practices for how um, software, the software development process works when you're actually working in the real world. Um, and you'll have sprints and things like this and all these sort of keywords that we're going to be throwing out, right? Um, and there'll be uh, ticketing systems that help with that, such as Jira and Confluence. And then you have um, VSTS, which is Microsoft's version, bootleg-ass version. <laughs> and, um, you know, Bugzilla, which is a free ticketing system. But what I'm trying to say is you should probably brush up a little bit on agile methodologies, Scrum, and things like that. Uh, just because you will see it on a lot of job apps and you should be... You could put it on there. You could spend a weekend reviewing it, what it is, how it works, and educate yourself about that and make you stand out quite a bit. So that's my list for what's required and what are not optional, but helpers. We'll call it helpers. Help helpers that you should have on your resume um, to help you land that, that job, to help you become a front-end developer. This is really uh, what I think you, the bare bones minimum you'll need in... 2018 to be a front-end developer so i hope you found that helpful as always guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe uh support me at patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360 we also have the facebook group at code tech and caffeine i appreciate you all i wish you the best of luck and if you if you agree disagree let me know in the comments below right i'm always trying to educate myself i think this is a, a pretty solid list in my opinion but uh that's why i made the video because i thought it was good but if you think it's wrong let me know all right bye Hey baby, what skill do you think a front-end developer needs in 2018? What do you mean by front-end? Never mind.